Karibu tena na tena katika nyumba ya Bwana. I want to take this opportunity to bring forth the word of God. Nashukuru kwa sababu ya kupata hii nafasi. I know I've been here the two Sundays. There is something you are talking about. And I want to share something that God dropped in my heart. Uh, that was on Friday. Uh, uh, we were praising uh, during the Kesha. And even as uh, our father stepped to minister the word of God, there is something that dropped in my heart. And that's what I want to share with us in Jesus' name. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Uh, you'll be understanding why I'm sharing it later, uh, even as we continue, because the topic I want to share on is marital settlement. <laughs> yes, marital settlement. You can write that. Marital settlement. Marital settlement. Even before I define all the terms that are there, I'd like to say we've been talking about dealing with the plague of demonic impressions. And uh, one of the things I realized, I saw an article, and I, I think I've mentioned this article here again. Uh, someone sent me an article. It's called Alice Bailey's 10-point plan on how to do away with Christianity. It's an article that says, if you like it, I can send. And uh, this lady was a demoniac. They were the, this, the, the way they call themselves, the queens of the marine. And she existed back in the late, probably 18s back there. And she wrote something, and by, to me, I, will, I understand it as a strategic plan on how to establish their kingdom and do away with this kingdom. Well, they cannot be able to do away with it, but... When you look at what she has written, you realize it is the exact thing that is happening today. And uh, in her 10-point plan, there are so many things that she has included. And one of them is to make sure that they destroy the family. The, they call it the traditional or the family structure. They are here. Uh, uh, I don't want to read them. But when I was looking at it, they have highlighted even how to do that. And one of the things that I realized that she was targeting more is the area of families. It is the area of families. And how are they supposed to do that? Uh, if I can read it very fast. The first thing uh, was to take God and prayer out of the education system. Number two, to reduce parental authority over the children. How? Three ways. Number one, promote excessive child rights. It is explained there. Number two, abolish corporal punishment. Number three, use teachers as agents of implementation. Number three, destroy the Judeo-Christian family structure or the traditional Christian family structure. How? Uh, the reason is because when the family is in place, the nation is in place and the church is in place. Is that true? And therefore, how are they supposed to do that? By promoting what we call sexual promiscuity sexual promiscuity all the sexual perversions that we are hearing of today and uh, number two they are to use advertising industry to do that work what do we mean by advertising industry we are talking about the television the magazine the film industry and in all these they do it to present sexual enjoyment as the highest pleasure in life and if you look at it that is what is happening in our generation today hello now, continue, they talk about, uh, 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 they say, if sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. These are things that are happening. Number five, make divorce easy and legal. Just make sure that you free people from the concept of marriage for life. Make homosexuality, number six, make homosexuality an alternative lifestyle. Number seven, debase the art, make it run mad. Debase the art. Make it run? Run mad. And that is why even the people who are in media, most of them that are taking the show, especially in the, uh, in the, secular, uh, in the secular world, uh, uh, in the media industry, most of them seek powers from the marine. Hello? They seek powers from the marine, the, 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 the gods of the waters. And um, the other one is use media to promote and change mindset. So I want you to understand that part, that they are supposed to use media 
to promote and change mindset. Because if, if you want to change something completely, the best way to do that is, is if only you can change my mind, how I think, how I consider something, Hello, praise the name of Jesus. If you can change my mindset concerning something, then definitely the Bible says the life of a man is a reflection of his heart. And of course, we know that we talk about the thoughts of the heart. You know Proverbs 23, 7, for what a man thinketh in his heart. Now, I don't want to go further, but in the 10th part, it says, get the governments to make all this law and get the church to endorse these changes. That is one of the plan. Now, I wanted to look at it because if you look at what is happening today, the media is in the front line influencing our mindsets concerning marriage. Is that true? And that is why I was getting it in my heart that even children should be taught about marital, about marriage. That is why. Do you remember Kicheza Chamama? Uh, do you remember Kicheza Chamama? That means, na unakuta mtoto kuna vile anataka kucheza kama baba, na mungina sima, mm -mm, mina ataka nicheza kama baba. I don't, I don't know whether you remember those days. We could relate to the roles of a father or a mother. Na hata leo, sometimes if you go to the Sunday school, uwaulize to something about marriage. Something about marriage. Utasikia. Kuna wakati nilienda mali, nikauliza na ile kipindi likuwa ni ya Maria. I want to tell you, watoto walikuwa wanataka wakue kama Maria. Na wengine walikuwa nataka wakua kama uyo jama wa Maria alikuwa nito nani? Eh? Yeah? Eh, yeah. ni Rui ama Louis. Okay. Now, do you realize? So, the media is influencing not only the children, ata ukiona wakiandika, recommended for the age between, nani anakuwa, wanakuwa hapo? Are they usually there? To control? No way. And therefore, I'll, I'll, we, we look at something here. It's a long thing, but I'll only compress for that which is of today. So, we also need to hear this so that we understand or we have the right kind of mindset concerning the same. When you talk about marital, when you talk about marital settlement, look at the term marital. Once in a while you have been asked, what's your marital status? What is your marital status? rhetorical question. And definitely it is known, right? So when we talk about marital matters, we are talking about matters relating to marriage. Matters relating to marriage. And each one of us has a marital status. The things I'll be sharing are things of some God have taught me, some have learned from them that have gone ahead of me. And by the reason of relating with uh, them that have gone ahead of me and that know more than I know and even the teachings of the word now marital settlement so definitely here we'll be talking about marriage issues hello matters that relate to marriage now settlement what do we mean by settlement what do we mean by settlement now uh, umeseto squeezy when will you settle? Are you getting what I'm, what I'm doing? Hello? When will you settle? So now, therefore, settling from the dictionary, to settle in life means to stay in one place, to stay in one job, or to stay with one person. Rather than just moving around and keeping on changing and changing. When you keep on changing, it simply means you are uncomfortable. There is a satisfaction. There is a fulfillment that you are not getting. Hello? Are we working together? And uh, it means you had several options. But now you have settled on one option that you can consider. This is my best and it is, the more, it is the one that satisfies me most. Now, I'm moving from broad to narrow. You can ask, why do we need to teach about marital issues? Not only to the youths, not only to the married, but even to the teenagers. You guys, shule enu, hakuna mstanari yore wakiwa form two? Ah, hello. Was there? 
in primary school nowadays he counseling yetu tunafanyia youth inahitajika mpaka kwa Sunday school primary you can raise your background kidogo hata hata kwa hata kwa watoto now if you go to primary schools and you are taking mission work there mtoto anakuja kukuuliza sasa hii sili ya kitambo wati usiibe hizo wanajua hizo wanajua so even the children know what it means to have a boyfriend true or false ndugu yako mwenye ko primary already ako na ka boyfriend juzi where i stay nilikuwa ninashuka stairs then nasikia kasitana kamekuja aka very young huyo hata sijani amefikisha miaka 10 So nikasikia akisema kai nimeenda nikamwambia bea na muita hey you know i felt like going back and asking huh? now uh, uh, several times i've had that girl akiongea in a very funny and queer way but now he can ishangaza huh? are, are you getting it so and the reason for teaching is not really because you'll get married tomorrow but you'll come to understand when it comes to marriage issues it starts from very far very far i was thinking of not mentioning them but this week i had the privilege of being with one servant of god in this church somewhere and he was testifying of how he visualized his marriage he says he married when he was young i mean he says he married akiwa sunday school i don't know if i can if i can remember those words very well and i said he married Akiwa was it less even less than 10 years if i can remember well now what is that that is to say he began to visualize about the marriage he wanted to get into akiwa mtoto mdogo so the mindset ambayo aliweka is what matters here hello bwana yesu asifiwe that is why these things must be taught and we should teach them and may god help us that even our brothers our young ones to our funza juzi a brother my brother comes in in, uh, uh, in our home and i asked him wewe kananja hujapata mtu na size wako class 8 so na jaribu tu kumenjoy i want to get what what he thinks about these things may god help us to see your hope kuwafunza because the point here why they are teaching the children is to change the mindset and will you agree with me that issues to do with marriage the mindset ya watu wengi imechangeiwa true or false but we are the ones to rise up radically as the church starting with us the youth and we influence one another to have the right kind of mindset concerning marriage bwana yesu asifiwe and that's why i'm going to talk about marital settlement because from what i've been hearing when i come for uh i wedding i don't just come because nataka kuja kuona even the sermon that is being preached it is a major concern to me praise the name of the living god now one thing that i have learned is that god is not just interested about us marrying that is why i want us to understand what marital settlement is of course there is how to secure marital settlement and all that now let me go deeper and say this to shape your vision to shape your vision of a marriage that you desire it requires you to have the knowledge that is desired your marriage should be part of your vision again in that very same place that we had the, uh, that servant of god there is a there is a there is a word that he shared <coughs> and it was on habakkuk chapter number 2 and verse number 3 nlt and it blessed me it blessed me it says nlt nlt for the nlt it says for the vision yes this vision is for a future time this vision is for a future so marriage is part of our visions in other words when we sit kama kuna kitu moja unaonaka ukifanya ni kuoa na kuolewa hello is that true is that true hello bwana yesu asifiwe but the question here is not look at it it describes the end and it will be fulfilled so the vision you have concerning the marriage what you see at the end pale hivi concerning the kind of marriage that you'll have a certain lady anaitwa Edwin K she sang a song it's called get of my way and in this song she talks uh, 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 it's a it's a song you encourage especially girls 
And it's called Get Off My Way. Now, now if, if you can go just research it, it's a good song you can even give to your sister to listen to the song or your brother. Or your brother. It's a nice one. But she says, it is, getting married is not a dream. By the way, it is true. Do you know it is true? It is a stage in life. Dream in Nigeria on the kind of marriage you'll want to have. Are we together? Ata si tu kisoma shule, na leo ni kona nyingi, tu kisoma shule, you realize, kuna zile stages tunambia kwa mtu na pitiaga, birth, initiation, marriage, death. So it is one of the stages that you expect utapitia. But now, the dream comes in on the kind of marriage that you'll have. Bwana Yesu wa sifiwe. Hallelujah. Um, the reason as to why we also have, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm sharing why we need to talk about these marital issues or matters to all ages. Number one, it's because to shape our vision, the vision of our marriage. To shape the vision of our marriage. Amen. And when you, when you have the right shape, your vision, your marriage, yako, then I can say you are ready, you will be ready to face the future, to face that future, to face that marriage with confidence. That is why most of us are in fear. Guy, nani nisipoonekana. Woy, nani kimuona akue siyo ye. Guy, natukia wana arafu sikuchache tu ikue kama ya yule bro. Natukika kidogo ikue kama ya yule sister. Arafu tukika ya kambiri arafu mutu wa geuke. Are you hearing of those, all those fears everywhere? Because the influence is wrong. Ndiyo yu tunawanyesho kwa vipindi, unasikia jamaa, aliona madam, anapita na yeye. Wako na huyu, ndo huyu mwingine. They are only trying to change our mindset and to, to destroy the right shape that we should have, your vision of our marriage. I want to move very fast. So you will be able to face that future confidently and fearlessly. Number two, it is to influence your words about your marriage. To influence your words about to influence your words concerning what you say about your marriage. To influence what you say about marriage. To influence what you say about marriage. Mind you, what it is what you say to yourself. If you read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 8, verse number 17, the Bible says, so that you don't say to yourself. Now, there are things that you also, yes, then you say in your heart. I just want you to take that part. So there are things that you can say in your heart. There are things you think and know about marriage. There are concepts, there are feelings and thoughts that you have that are formed in your heart. And when you talk to yourself about marriage, it is not the right kind of conversation. Do you know, is it Derek Prince who said, your words determine your destiny. Your words determine your... So even what you say about marriage, what you say about the kind of marriage that you look forward, you desire, you aspire, you anticipate to get into. The words you speak are very important. And that is why it has to be taught. It has to be. That is why. Hata kama hawa kesho. Soma vitabu za marriage. Hata kama hawa next year. How is so mitundi yo kesho. You are reading also to change your mindset. So your words determine your destiny. And what you say about your destiny is very key. And we know that marriage is a component of destiny. Praise the name of God. And the truth is that you can secure your destiny by your words. Proverbs 19.21 Death and life are in the power of your tongue. So there is that, whatever you declare, it happens. So the words you speak, they carry either life. So you can give that, you can kill the vision, your marriage, yako, ama you can bring life into it. Na uishepu kwa maneno yako. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I want you to know that you get what you say. So the declaration that you made, the things that you said to yourself, to people, and even to God concerning marriage, they matter most. And therefore, that is why we must learn about these things. Amen. Unajua hasa watu wakiwa revival mode, ukiongea kuhusu ndoa inakuwa kiswahiri. I was looking at a certain uh, man of God, I took Apostle Edu, najua sisi wote tunamjua, uh, there are some who know him, wa Nigeria. This man groans in the spirit. 
Sasa juzi anaweka kwa YouTube anataka kuoa. Unajua mpaka nilipoze kwanza haya. Nikasahau hata mimi nilio. Because he is very spiritual unasikia guy. Ilibidi arudi. Nyinyi mkumbuki I remember kuna wakati mpaka watu waliweka a uh, 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 status sana za Apostle Michael Rock. So you know him when he was marrying and they are like guy ali propose hivyo. So sometimes when you talk about marriage when people are just thinking about 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 prayer sometimes wanafikiria kama umechomoka injera lakini wacha nikuambie I've come to learn that if you miss there you miss everything marriage is connected to your destiny hello now i want to give you what it mean what what we mean by marital settlement number one, what we mean and i declare that the influence of god's word will be above every other influence concerning marriage in your life in jesus name I said the influence of the word of God will be above every other influence in your life concerning marriage in Jesus name. Number one, what do we mean by marital marital settlement? Therefore marital settlement means number one, entering into marriage satisfactorily with one person without the need to change. That's the first one. Entering into marriage satisfactorily with one person without the need to change and not just changing physically unaoa number 2 but changing even in the mind changing even in the please follow me and then you'll just be joining dot as we move on the truth is that marriage is a covenant marriage is a so you have settled it is this one i'm satisfied no matter the fault the faults and everything I have committed love is a commitment you say i know the worst part of you but i still commit to love you are you are we together hello guys now that means you have entered into marriage with satisfaction regardless of what you know about the person that you won't change hata kwa mafikira hautabadilisha Ephesians chapter number 5 that you want to that uh, 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 verse number 31 the bible says for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh one of the messages that bless me among many among who be in in the wedding it is one by the grace of god to god's glory pastor I'm a preach that leave and cleave that one caught me i remember kwanza nilipoze nika text my wife na ni kwa harusi leave and cleave now unaambiwa you become one one cannot be separated that means you become come on guys you become so see your trial how jaenda eg you are doing the practical thing hello malachi 2:14 is the one now that tells it well that marriage is a covenant and the term covenant is a serious word the term covenant is a serious Hello guys the term covenant is a serious Look at the the last part or yet you say for what reason because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of you So this someone that you marry as a youth and you go with them all the way Maisha yako yote then with whom you have dealt with trick 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 trickly hey yet she is your companion and the wife of the wife by, i mean and your wife by wife by so what are you imbe hizi nyimbo zote unasikia oh nani ni celeb alioa alafu akaolewa tena let me tell you don't follow people just because unasikia they are famous and because they do this and that sorry but somebody said nonsense remains nonsense even when spoken by famous scientists Mind you that Kibaki was the president and he called people mafia kuku there is nobody who calls his business mafia kuku enterprise no way just because he used the word are you getting me so don't just follow people it is not written anywhere that they have been approved so know this you have entered into marriage with that one person satisfactorily and you know no need to change hata kwa akili shetani akikwambia unataka eh anaatia Number two. 
having or entering into marriage that you gratefully uh, no, having or entering into a marriage that you are grateful and thankful about and not complaining about entering into a marriage that you are grateful and thankful about and not complaining about it gratefulness is an attitude it is a feeling thankfulness is now the action I feel grateful that is a feeling thank you that is an action so you feel great na hata huwa unasema thank you i mean you are grateful about it now gratitude shows that you are satisfied gratitude shows satisfaction complaining shows dissatisfaction hello bwana yesu asifiwe give me genesis chapter 2 verse number 24 very fast genesis chapter number 2 Verse number 24. I want you to walk with me first up. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother. No, go to 23. Oh, yes. Angalia wakati Adam aliletewa mke. Hii ndio ilikuwa maneno. Hata alisema. Alisema nini? 1 2 3 tusome pamoja. And Adam this is now. So This is Anataka kuseto ameona wanyama hajaseto na wao companion in terms of companionship. So this is now the bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh and she shall be called because she was taken out of me. That is a man that is grateful and thankful because of the woman ambaye akona. Hello. Sije kama naeleweka. Exactly. God bless you. Amen. Now look at Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 12. Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 12. The same person who was grateful and thankful hapa anakuja then the man the same man Hata hii nisaidieni kusoma then the man said the woman whom you gave to be with me Yeah She gave me of the tree and ate Now if you read the Bible you realize Adam was not deceived. It is Eve that was deceived. Adam fell because of love. There is a scripture that tells that. It is Eve that was deceived. Adam fell because of but it is Eve that was deceived by the serpent. Are we together there? Now look at it. If you look at this complaining about marriage It's not necessarily because you didn't marry the right person. It's not simply because there was a mismatch. That's not it all. It's not because you are not meant no way. Because hapo ndipo watu huwa nafika wanasema just because of a small conflict. We were not meant to be and all that. Na hiyo ndo tunaonyeshwa kwa media. Makasiriko kidogo tu. Makasiriko kidogo. Hello, makasiriko kidogo. Anaenda harafu nasikia amekuwa sponsored amepata sponsors you and all that. But ukiangalia hapa what resulted to complain so God can give you someone that in the beginning you are grateful and thankful about not complaining. But there is a responsibility laid on you. That is why when you hear there is a marriage seminar na unaweza ukasikiza na ijaambiwa restricted to married only. Sikiliza sit with parents sit with people who have marriages ambazo unatamani desire to know what happens to them because there is a responsi there is a responsibility bwana yesu asifiwe so when you hear people at your waliachana wacha kusema at your they were not meant to be there is a responsibility and the problem is when there is arrogance involved and arrogance hiyo pride inakuwa kwa sababu ya ignorance kutojua Let me tell you foolishness is bad when you act out of foolishness it is dangerous but I pray in the mighty name of Jesus may there be a hunger for knowledge may there be a hunger for knowledge in Isaiah chapter 11 don't remember the verse very well but the bible talks about I don't know whether it's verse 6 the bible talks about and the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the lord 
And by that the Bible says, even a lion shall stay in the same place with a goat. I, I, I don't know whether you have read that part. That because the knowledge, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion. The fatling uh -huh, and a little child shall lead to them. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Sasa, if the knowledge of God can make a wolf to dwell with a the lamb, then the knowledge of God concerning marriage can help you dwell with that wife of your youth for all the days of your life. Sir, you don't know how much it blesses us when we see you've come with mom. We see you've come with mom. You preach to us even without saying anything. Mr. Isaac, when you see that even after marriage, we are here. Even with our wives. Whoa! Is it not a preaching? Is it not a preaching? Ask to bring heaven down in your marriage. It is work. Where is it? Check eight there. But it is, and the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Now, brethren, complain in a kujaga kakutojua. Therefore, I want to challenge you. Oh yes, they shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. I challenge you. Fill yourself with the knowledge of that which you desire to get to. I can describe my generation in one simple word. One simple statement. A zealous generation without knowledge. A zealous generation without you want to get married but know nothing about marriage. And if you know something is because nataka nipate katoto kama kandugu yangu. Wewe vile akinapenda hiyo macho. Hey, napenda kala hiyo mtoto. So mpaka wewe chenye unafanya ni kama unatafuta kala za ku blend watoto. Sio bwana unatafuta unatafuta uko kwa blending. Is it to see ziko? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Marito settlement sio pesa na gari. Dia nitakwambia saa hii people like Solomon wenye hawaku seto. Wacha nierekishe. So I pray that you receive the hunger for knowledge. Hunger for knowledge. Say amen. Hunger for knowledge. In the name of Jesus. Source books. Bishop David Oyedepo wakasema before he married alikuwa amesoma I don't know how many books concerning marriage until he was so full of knowledge that he was sure I, I will have a hitch free marriage so that akienda kwa marriage counselor wake akamwambia na unajua in marriage muta muta kanyangana akamwambia no sir no no aliulizwa what kind of a marriage do you look for to get to getting into kamwambia a hitch free marriage kamwambia no you cannot you can you cannot be in the same house na mukanyagani akamuuliza ju tumekuwa kwa hii nyumba akauliza na heshima usiende kuuliza arrogantly ju tumekuwa kwa hii nyumba nimekukanyanga <laughs> yeah? so it is like saying there is a possibility of having a hitch free sio kwa sababu nyinyi ni malaika but there is a knowledge that can equip you ukae na dada wa wenyewe na ndugu wa wenyewe au jivu vile huwe inanibariki nikisikia watu wameona 20 years 10 years 30 years na wanasema nasikia ni kama ndio tumeanza ai ah mm ai nyinyi mwelewi maneno bwana yesu asifiwe how is that how do you feel ukisikia if i was given a chance to choose i'll still choose hey hey ah ah hey bwana yesu asifiwe hiyo ni neto kwa settlement bwana atukuzwe so I, I challenge you. <clears throat> that is you get into a marriage you are not ashamed of because you are equipped with the knowledge to clear off, to wash away that shame. Amen. So ukisikia ndugu yako ameachana, wacha kusema. And then continue. Oh, how my insider wanakuwa hapa. Na zina tunakuwa ka party ya kuharibu ndo waza wengine. How aki nyinyi nyinyi aki oy aki ulichagua vibaya. No, it's not necessarily because of that. Wengine ni ignorance. And let me tell you, kinuliza mimi nitasema, it is more dangerous to act out of little knowledge than acting out of no knowledge. Inamaanisha nini? 
wale watu wanatii anajua anajua ukweli kidogo hajui yote zile maibu wanapataka wacha tu ni heri mwenye anaat bila kujua tutajua shida yake ni gani wacha niendelee number 3 making a resolve or reaching the decision making a resolve or reaching a decision and determination reaching the decision and the determination of who to marry or who to get married to of who to marry or who to get married to and doing so comfortably so umeshaamua ni huu ni huu ndio nitaoa na huu ndio atanioa alafu unasonga kuendelea na hiyo maana haya ina maanisha umesato na hiyo option so proverbs 18:22 the bible says he who finds he who he who ladies na nyimu lazima mkaeka he who is found hello aha he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord i want to make a statement here finds a good thing It is one thing to marry a wife a cure a good thing and it is another thing for that wife or that husband to remain a good thing. Nimeeleweka? Hallelujah. It is one thing to get married or marry a good thing and it's another thing for that person to remain a good thing to you. That is when narudi kwa hiyo point ingine. Knowledge. Equip yourself with plan for the wedding but make sure lifetime kutoka kitambo you are preparing for your marriage amen adopt in favor from the lord he who finds i pray that if you are here it is your time and you have not found may every barrier be broken in jesus name now you can say an amen for that brother i declare in jesus name if you are here you are You are, you are denying us that testimony it has not yet come and it is your time let every barrier be broken in jesus name may you find i said may you find in jesus name and find a good thing i said and find a good thing in jesus name if you are here you are a lady you have not been found may you be foundable that is my grammar may you be foundable in the name of jesus may you be found if it is time he makes the things beautiful in their own time so if you want it beautiful okay i, I will answer <laughs> it was ahead but okay L- let me let me come to that now if you read ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 11 it says All right. Um okay, it's okay. I can go with it but in future when I come to that we'll still remember uh, repeat it. He has made everything beautiful in its time. So the first thing you need to know is if you want it beautiful timing is everything. If you want it beautiful time is news and your time is not my your time is not my I'll go further. Ecclesiastes 3:1 Ecclesiastes 3:1 To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven not the word time and season Now I want you to know that one of the things that you should not do don't rush because others are rushing Are we together Let me start from there Don't marry at age 25 because Benja married at age 25. After all, he wanted to marry at age 30. Don't say nataka tu nikae nipate pesa because it is not marriage that prepares people for marriage. Another statement you wanted to make because I just want to highlight that age does not prepare you for marriage. Though age is a factor 
Age does not prepare you for marriage. You can just be growing in age, but you're not growing here. All right. Now, how do I know it's time? Let me start with mine. Let me start spiritually because he who finds, I wanted to make a statement there and say, this is both spiritual and physical. This is both a practical thing and a spiritual thing. Now, he who finds, that is why you involve, you have to involve God. Let me give you my scenario and it's possible with everybody and it's the same case even with the Bible. Look at a man like Adam. A time came, it is God who Call him into awareness. Now, unahitaji mutu wewe. Are you getting it? So now, when I read that scripture, I told God, nilienda ni kajaribu ni ka... I, 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 I saw a certain lady. KJV na waitaka damsel. I saw a damsel. Mm. So, ni kaenda na ni ka propose. Yo si kuirikuwa murefu. Nataka kumbia kijana alitoka na kuru wa kaenda roiro. Na ni kaenda. Because I wanted to be like everybody else. I had promised myself. I'll get into a relationship in my third year. So ever since birth, I had never been in a relationship. So I have promised my... So see my timing. Are you seeing my timing? Until I get to that year. So I got into that year. So I didn't consider all facts. I only considered... So I saw a damsel and uh, I went to propose... And I want to tell you, I almost got into trouble. Then, when I'm praying, I continue to pray. And God told me, if you continue that relationship, I'll either take you or her. So one of us was to die. All right. It is that serious. And anyway, I understand why. When God sees, Ile kitu nataka kukufanyia, ata kama nikubiri ujume kama ina na simwaje yokoke, a lot can be done. So I told God, this is the inspiration that came in my spirit. I told God, God, number one, the Bible says, am I talking to Christians? The Bible says, man always ought to pray. Luke 18.1. Is that true? That is like saying, technologically, if you want to be receiving any update, any notification, as soon as it comes, bila kuchelewa, remain connected to internet. I may understood. So, if you want the father to notify you as he notified Adam, then this comes. Man always ought to. I told God, Father, I will remain connected to you. And now this is my prayer. Until the day when it is my season and my time. Not that. When it is my season and my time, oh God, notify me. Oh God, do what? Thank you. Now, how does God notify you? Our God is a loving God. Say amen. Before we come to the time for you to marry, we first enter into the season. So remember, season is broad, time is specific. Hello? Season is broad. The time is? I'm going to explain. When it's your season to marry, I tell you, if you are truly connected to God, He will notify you. Do you know how? Kuna promptings. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 19, the Bible says, the Spirit of God that God gave you, He lives in you. The one to notify you is in you. And the Bible says, I am not on my own. Listen, first Corinthians. I am not. Look at this. And you are not your. my friend. So don't fear. That time comes and he notifies you. Ask all of them that married. They are here. I, 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 I pray that I'll see a nod if it's true. When it's your time and you're truly connected, there is a prompting you usually have. But now, that is when it is the season ya kuwa. Wacha ni kwereze season na time kwanza. Umwayenda kwa YouTube, ukakuta wameandika, the message imepostiwa, lakini unambiwa, it will, itachezwa, sakumi. So unambiwa, 
click here to be notified. Have you ever seen that? So already to go kwa season ya kusikiza hiyo message lakini time specific haijafi. So hata wewe unaweza kuwa uko kwa season watu wamekwambia oh niliota na wewe ukiwa umevaa. Na ufikirie ni time. Hiyo ni season. Wa kuna season ya kupanda na kwa hiyo season mkulima ndo wanajuaga the time ya kupanda nimeeleweka si ndio so kuna mtu aliona nikioa na mimi niliona nikioa an year back okay mimi nilionyesha kwa tu mwili si kuonyeshwa kichwa though it, i was in a 21 day fast so but i i saw the size and the body shape of my wife <laughs> eh? so later on i saw it her remain connected are you together hiyo mu auta miss so akaona hivyo na mimi nikaona before mimi benja nikaanza kielele kuna kitu si kufanya ndo ningetaka ufanye do you know what i did i was at tp somewhere ah nasikia promptings conviction ni wakati it is time na nikajiuliza benjamin why are you marrying i realize there are so many things inside of me that god wants me to do but i can't share with my mother i can't share with my father all of them are not getting me so i need someone close to me who can help me in it i identify i ident we'll mention that finally as we go to the last one so nikaona madam flani so mimi macho yangu nikaanza kuna kitu sikufanya ningepe na hiyo tunataka kufanya si ni season so nikaanza ku pinpoint na ule na nikaanza ku analyze na yuko na vile wewe wacha nikuambie sio Samuel peke yake in first Samuel chapter 16 mpaka nikaandaa chai kwa shule nika, na ofisi nikatengeneza <laughs> No I'm feeling it's my season and that's a mistake that we usually make eh madam alikuwa anafikiria because they only knew Benjamin Muhubiri so she don't have a serious meeting to engage in here labda hata alifikiria anakuja kukemewa alafu ile maneno anakutana nao mistari bwana Yesu asifiwe na nikamwambia ah you don't need to give the answer now my friend i was in school <laughs> yes oh, with the lady <laughs> <laughs> all right we will still later all come to how to secure marital settlement but because it's coming right now and you can feel there's a breakthrough there's someone who needs that so i went to the lady so <laughs> please you don't have to follow mine we are different but i told her One I congratulated her for <laughs> Pastor Steve watch. <laughs> so I congratulated her for the work she was doing around so I, I had to look for a way to feature in. Chani kwambie wakati mtu anaonaka ni kama inakuwa mrefu. Eh. Oh, thank you sir. Yeah, I, I had to create an atmosphere. That word was escaping. So I had to create an atmosphere. So singeenda tu nikwambie tu mara moja nimeota. Nimeongereshwa na Roho Mtakatifu. No, I wouldn't do that even if I felt it's a conviction of the Holy Ghost. I wanted that to feel to know I feel something about her. Are you getting it? So I congratulated her and I told her, uh, there's something I wanted to share with you. Uh, I can I remember very well but now I began to introduce the issues as as a marriage and I told her wow it's a beautiful thing and life is good life is in stages right now we are teaching and you know that at one point we'll get married No I, and and I didn't mean that we'll get married the two of us it's at one point you'll hear of people having marriage and yes sir <laughs> I'm like <laughs> Yes. 
Yes, sir. You see, the Bible says my people perish because of lack of what? Knowledge. Now, I know this message is a message on time. In the morning, there's something, my wife is a witness, I'll not tell you the details. We were in a, an atmosphere of setting up a, a marriage atmosphere. Very early in the morning. And then I find the message here. And now, uh, what uh, our pastor is sharing with us, I know it's a message on time. And somebody needs to hear this. And it is you. What the, po the point where he is, right where he is now, that's why I told him to go back there, they call it breaking the ice. No, breaking the ice. Now, that is the hardest part in relationships. You are seeing somebody. I salute you, sir. <laughs> I salute you, sir. And I salute you, madam. <laughs> this, this man told us how he broke the ice. <laughs> now, breaking the ice. You need now to create an atmosphere and then bring the subject so what he has told us he prepared an atmosphere set a cup of tea something like that uh, and not in private places sour number two then find ask the holy spirit to give you words to say what is in your heart that is breaking the ice continue sir thank you sir so I yeah, appreciate it's humbling even God confirming something uh, actually I wrote I was writing things up to around 1pm or 1.30 today morning and I didn't know why God was revealing all things, these things to me but now <clears throat> so I told her do you know at one point we'll now be talking about married people she said yes when you ask when you have and uh, if I called you in my wedding, will you come? You said, yeah. Well, I've seen someone and uh, I've been observing the way this person is behaving. Uh, I've, I've observed her life and I'm So, I've been thinking of So, I've been thinking of approaching this person. So, I've been thinking of approaching this person. So I've been thinking of approaching this person. Uh, so hold on to that. I am my wife. So this one. So I've been thinking of her and I've been thinking of asking her. So I would you like to know her? Yeah. That's you. All right. First of all, first of all, it was a, first of all, it was a, huh? Because, and before I did that, I identified who in that message about marital restlessness. Because if you don't settle maritally, you'll be restless maritally. So there are examples of people in the Bible that I, uh, God helped me to write and why they were restless. Okay? And one of them, the Kukosa accountability persons. So I identified the teacher who was so close to her. So I went and told her, Madam, I'm thinking of this. I, know, I knew she was a born again. So, see, could you trust me when you see when I like if what my feelings to come and my song? So, I I went and talked to her and come on. But this is how I feel. I feel I'm convinced. And I feel it's her, and I want to ask her. Never fear to ask. So, mimi ni kasema nita uliza alafu nimpe break na mimi hiyo break ili maombi ni taomba. Yeah, are you getting it? So, I talked to her. First of all, I kashina ba kunywa chai and yalikuwa na kunywa. And the teacher knew, I think the teacher knew we were in that office because it was a counseling office. You're getting it. So I told her, so wherever you have your time, go think about it. So remember, I had not completed my studies. I think I was now in my final year. And I was teaching. 
during the holiday, that's when I go to study. It's called distance learning. Okay? So I went back to school. Here I am praying. Can I tell you what I was doing? Ecclesiastes chapter 7. That's why I'm telling you knowledge is important. Ecclesiastes chapter number... No, Philippians chapter number 1, verse number 9, the message version. So this is what I did. And this is what we should do. And that is why you hear... Mimi chenye siku fanya ni chenye pastor home anasema alifanya. So you said ulika how many months before you ask her and you knew it's her? Uh, you, you ever shared with us? Uh, six months. So I wanted to look at it. So for me this is what I did. So message version. So look at it verse number. So I had this revelation later. So in the process of praying God revealed these things to me. So this is my prayer that your love will flourish and that you will not only love much but the other one says learn to love how appropriately you need to use your head to mefunzo your mind is an asset use your head and taste your feelings so I had to be sure whether it is just, is it just but feelings now continue verse number 10 why do you have to taste your feelings so that your love is sincere and intelligent. Sincere love, true. See, you are sure that you are intelligent means, oh my, it is worth emulating. Are we together? And not a come on, guys, and not a now. What is a sentimental gush? A sentimental gush, this is where you rush out of excess emotions. You act out of excess. So for me, there were emotions. For me, there were emotions. Hold on to that a minute. When God was teaching me about how to settle maritally, He brought me into all the transitions that take place in life. We'll talk about that later, sawa sawa, in future. And God was teaching me that it begins from birth. So can we talk about the transition that take place in life? First, birth. Transition from the womb to the physical. Is that true? Secondly, the other transition was not take place. Nishule. Sinisama. In school, there is a transition to womanhood and transition into manhood. Now, hapo ndo kuna kuwaka na kazi. So, there is an understanding if you fail to get there, itakuzuia ukingia into work. Because it's another transition. Then, another transition into marriage. Now, marriage, when, how, why, where, when to marry, is affected by all those factors if you're not careful of them. So for me in high school, my transition to manhood was not filled with knowledge. Abu give me Philippians 1.9, not paying NIV. Because love, it says, and this is my prayer, that you love me abound more and more in knowledge and depth of so when your love is not based on knowledge and depth of insight insight is not opinion insight is received when you are meditating one of the marriages that yesterday I, w- I shared this message with my wife and we began to share on one of the people that settled maritally in the bible it is Isaac and, and Rebecca hakuna mahali out of all our wengine in the lineage of Abraham huyo peke yake no, kutafuta mtu mwingine. Is that true? Are we in agreement there? But look at him. When the wife is coming in Genesis 24, the Bible says, alikuwa meketi maali ana meditate. That is why you remember the story. Is that true? Hello? Alikuwa meketi maali ana? So, ata akimuona, and the Bible says, he loved Rebecca. Na akapapas, na akamua. Because it is based on knowledge and depth of if your love is not based on knowledge and depth of insight, do you know what you are doing? It is a sentimental gush. That will not be sincere. That love will not be intelligent. So we are on that part of timing. That's why I want to end on. So look at it. So I ended up on sentimental gush. Just get this and then we end. I ended up on doing that sentimental gush. So this is what happened. I began to pray. I went to school. I'm praying, Father, she's supposed to give me an answer. This is my prayer. If it is not your will, let her say no. 
if it is your will let it be a yes oh my na unasindikiza na tongues kama kitu kingine unaenda shule la koza kata kala kata parara na kukuwa na masa yani that thing is consuming you because the knowledge and the depth of insight i had is knowing what marriage can do because marriage can either help you or harm you marriage can either help you or and it's a knife on your hands you either are shaped or you cut each other depending on the knowledge and insight so in the process of praying this is how god did it one if one 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 morning nasikia mungu anambia usikule leo naenda canteen usiku na ni shule na kuna lectures na lecture wa hesabu amekaa masaa kama ini anataka si mnawajua anataka cover up zote zinje kwa nini mpaka imefika maliza ni anamaliza unascreen unapiga picha na mwanzo unapiga picha na maliza unapiga picha alafu utaenda kujishughulisha baadaye i'm hungry but i here don't so that day i didn't take anything so lessons nilipoisha si kungoja hata marafiki zangu i went immediately to where i was staying in the hostel my knew the devil wanted to terminate me i felt a push go rush hurry so the moment i enter i used to carry a prayer mat with me in school so nikaiweka nikapiga magoti all of a sudden i had boof boof kumbe there is a lorry that was sloping somewhere uko uko parklands ilikuwa inateremka ika swing ikaanguka na kuna students walikuwa wanavuka wengine waligongwa na wengine wakafa so it was a determining moment for me are you getting it hello so mimi nikaenda nikaanza kuomba i'm praying i'm praying watu ndo wanaendea sasa sisiki kuendea then i saw a call the lady called mind you at that time the wife i've married right now i had shared with her the same story so i told her nimeenda kuuliza mtu that's a story for another day so she 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 told me oh i thought nisika nisikukaishe sana nikajua oh ndio sababu niliambiwa ni the holy ghost the holy you are not on your own she told me uh based on how i'm feeling the state and the conditions that i'm um, are surrounding me i'm not saying a no to you but for me i'm not ready and i wouldn't want to delay you please you're free to move on ah mm. si kuanza fujo wachaga nini mm, i knew so i told her wow thank you very much even for the response i only have one request from you she asked me what request okay which request you can raise and gani hapo let us assume ni kama sijai ku propose ya yeah and we continue existing as friends is that okay yes today when i was doing my wedding the brother is a friend i think he fellowships here probably anaza kuwa kwa around yeye ndiye alimlipia suti ya kusimamia harusi and she was one of them that contributed yeah you can appreciate jesus so even how you part is key so this is the part na maliza tu kwa this is the part on the uh, on the timing so one thing god did is some simumasoma hiyo inasema you are love you should live a lover's life that is circumspect considering all facts that is what it means to be circumspect so usiangalie tu nimekaa kabla sija sina mtu and exemplary upendo yenye inezeika igwa don't be a warning upendo inaza igwa a life that jesus is proud of and it is only beautiful when it's the right time so this is the thing Psalms 85 verse 8 God spoke to me can i tell you the language he spoke to me the language of peace nilikosa amani na that which is not of his 85 verse 8 you will hear what the lord will speak for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints i'm here to tell you so long as you remain connected the father will notify you and when you hear it is the season don't hurry take time to test your mind get depth in insight depth of insight and knowledge about the same don't hurry and if you want to hurry somebody said hurry slowly okay then take time and then you will not end up into foolishness it is your season to marry find out the exact timing 
that is where people fail to understand but I encourage you if you remain connected the Lord himself will notify you in Jesus name I declare over your life you will not miss your time you will not miss in your season in the name of Jesus I declare the grace and the anointing of the sons of Issachar I think in 1st or 2nd Chronicles 12 32 the Bible says they understood time and seasons I pray for you the wisdom to understand the time and season of your marriage in Jesus name and I declare you will not miss I declare you will not miss it was a good interruption upon the Nakubariaga Holy Ghost. Therefore, I declare over your life by so doing, you will not just get married, you will settle maritally. Stand up on your feet. And I want you to declare, I will settle maritally. Yesterday, when I was I, I asked my wife, honey, do you feel like you are settled? If you are to go for another, will you still go for me? Because I do want to preach a message, I'm guilty of. So she started even before, and she said, I'm settled. We are young, I agree, but we have purpose, and that is our prayer. We will have what we call marital settlement and not marital restlessness. I want you to just go before God and thank God for the promise to settle you one day in a marriage. Give thanks to God, everybody, only in two minutes, one minute, just to give thanks to God. Father, thank you for the promise to settle each one of us in marriages. Marriages that usher people in their destiny. Marriages that are for help marriages that are our advantages marriages that are for, for, for our good so shall it be upon us and thank you for that is the promise thank you in the name of Jesus I declare the hunger and the thirst for knowledge I purpose I want you to purpose in yourself and talk to yourself I purpose to search I purpose to dig in knowledge and fill myself with the knowledge of the Lord in such a way that it will help me and equip me to have a, a marriage that I'm not ashamed of. I declare over your life, you will not fall into the trap of evil marriages in Jesus' name. You will not fall into the trap of mismatch in Jesus' name. The agenda of the enemy to confuse you, land on the wrong people, that is not your portion. I declare that you will hear the Lord speaking to you and you will hear the language of peace. I declare the understanding of that language of peace over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive that ability to understand. For God speaks knowledge to them that have understanding. Receive that understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. And I prophesy over your lives, having my eyes open, you will not land, you will not fall into marital restlessness. You will rest in Jesus' name. I declare that over your life. Put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. In future, we will continue with the definition and the other things. Are you there? You are not born again. You like to give Jesus your life. You cannot be connected. If you are not born again, your spirit is not alive. You can't connect with the Father. You are like this microphone connected, but without batteries, it can't work. You are there. Lift up your hand if you like to receive Jesus. Father, we thank you. We declare that in our services, there will be many that will be added to us. Even by way of receiving salvation in this place. Let the sick be healed. The lost be restored. The possessed be delivered. The lost find their direction in Jesus' name.